So we're going to have a look at this question, Rachel, that came from the 7127-1 paper from 2020. Rachel's got an online shop um, and she's provided you with a trial balance together with additional information. And what Rachel would like us to do is prepare an income statement for the year ended 31st of March 2020. So if we just look down the um, trial balance, nothing particularly exciting there. We've got discounts both on the same line. So one's going to be allowed, that's on the debit side, expenses are debits, and the other one is going to be discounts received on the credit side. Um, inventory, that's going to be the opening inventory. So that was at the 1st of April 2019, brought forward from last year. We've got fixtures and fittings at cost, and there's already a provision for depreciation brought forward. We've got purchases, general expenses, rent and rates, sales revenue, and we've got trade payables and trade receivables. So if we just work through the additional information, I'm going to do some workings before we move on to preparing the income statement. So number one, all goods are sold on a credit basis. We don't need to do anything with that piece of information. Um, number two, revenue included goods on a sale or return basis, which had been sent to a customer on the 24th of March 2020. So that was shortly before the end of Rachel's financial year. These goods were invoiced at a selling price of £6,000 with a markup of 25%. Now remember when things are marked up, we start with cost of sales as the 100% figure. We add the markup, which in this case is 25%, which means that the selling price represents 125% of the cost price. Okay. Um, now they were sold to the customer for £6,000 and they've been recorded in both the general ledger. So remember the general ledger will be where you find the sales revenue account um, and also in the receivables ledger. So that's where the customer would be found. The customer returned the goods on the 3rd of April 2020. So if goods are sent to customers on a sale or return basis, we shouldn't be recording the actual sale until such times as that has been confirmed. And in this case, the sale never happened because the goods came back um, you know, a little over a week later on the 3rd of April 2020. So what we've got to do for number two is unravel the sale or return. OK, now, if we remember the calculation when we're dealing with markup, we've got sales minus cost of sales is gross profit. Okay, now sales, well, when we're working with markup, the cost of sales is 100%. In this case, we're adding a 25% markup, and that means that the selling price represents 125%. So if we stick the figure in that we know, we know that sales was £6,000. So the way to solve this one is to divide it by 125 and times it by 100 to bring you back to the cost price. You can do the same to find the gross profit, so the 6000 divided by the 125 times it by 25 to get you 1200, which is the gross profit. You can just check that the maths works there. <clears throat> so the way we've got to deal with this then is to get rid of 6,000 pounds out of sales revenue. Okay, just for completeness, we'd also be getting rid of that out of the trade receivables figure. So it's important that we do that in case further down the line, we need to calculate something like a provision for doubtful debts, um, for example. Um, right, so that's number two dealt with in terms of the um, the sale, but we've also got to sort out inventory. Okay, so we need to add four thousand eight hundred pounds. That's the cost of the goods that were sent on a sale or return basis because they were with the customer. It doesn't expressly tell us that, but we can assume that they were missed out of the uh, the inventory and because the sale had been recorded. Um, then that inventory wouldn't have been included. So we need to add that back to the closing inventory figure, which obviously isn't in the trial balance. It's only the opening inventory up there. But number three, we can work out closing inventory. So the original figure it tells us was 19,267. Um, we need to add the sale or return to that. So let's do that before we forget. So that 4,800 is going to be added onto the closing inventory figure and then we've got goods that have been damaged and need to be repaired so we need to calculate the net realizable value so um, they originally had a cost price of 925 so when we're trying to deal with this um, taking the lower of cost and net realizable value always ring fence the cost price never be tempted to do anything with that it's a factual amount it's what's been paid for the goods the thing we have to calculate though is the net realizable value so the net realizable value in this case is the 1020 that we could sell the goods for minus the 160 pounds um, that we're going to have to pay to get them mended. So 1020 minus 160 means that the net realizable value is 860 pounds. So the way we deal with it is to um, 
make an adjustment, we're going to reduce the value of the inventory. We're going to take away the 925 and add the 860, or the easier way of doing it is just to take off the difference. So cost was 925. We're now only going to be able to realise £860. So there's a further loss on that inventory of £65. So we need to record that. So that's going to reduce the value of inventory. So closing inventory now is going to be 19267 plus 4800 minus 65, which is 24002. Okay, right, number four, we've got annual rent of £9,000 was paid to the 31st of March, sorry, 31st of May 2020. The year ends in March, so the prepayment is actually going to be two twelfths of that amount. So let's just do that as a working. The prepayment is 2 over 12 times £9,000. So 9000 effectively divided by 6, £1,500. So we're going to need to take £1,500 away from the rent and rates. And we would add that as a current asset if we were doing a statement of financial position. Okay, number five then. It says that the purchases figure included the purchase of some fixtures and fittings on the 1st of December 2019 at a cost of £12,000. So we need to take the £12,000, we need to add it onto the fixtures and fittings at cost, but we must remember to take it out of our purchases figure there. So that 82567 is going to be reduced by £12,000. Okay, so that's what we're doing with that one. For number six, Depreciation is charged on a time apportioned basis using the straight line method at a depreciation rate of 20% per annum. Well, when it's time apportioned, we've potentially got three factors that are going to make up our overall depreciation charge. So we're going to have a full year's depreciation on any assets that remained all year. We're going to have part year depreciation on any assets that were disposed of during the year and part year depreciation on any assets that were purchased during the year. Now we're not told about any disposals so we can see here that the £96,000 was there all year so 20% of £96,000 is £19,200 but the 12000 extra assets that were bought still going to charge 20% but they were bought on the 1st of December 2019 so we need to count how many months they've been available so we've got December January, February and March. So we're going to need to restrict that by 4 twelfths. So 12,000 times 20 percent times 4 over 12 is 800 pounds. So the total depreciation charge for the year is going to be 20,000 pounds. Okay, um, last but not least, we've got a check paid to a supplier for 1500 pounds on the 30th of March had not yet been accounted for. Well, the double entry for that one is going to be to add it into the bank. So we're going to take £1,500 off of the overdraft. It will reduce the, the bank overdraft. We're also going to deduct it from our trade payables. So there's nothing on the income statement that's going to be affected as a result of those adjustments. Okay, so if we start with the income statement, now they've already given it the title for us. We don't need to rewrite that, but we can start with our sales revenue. Be my calculator for this. So the sales revenue actually I don't think has changed at all. Oh no, it has, yes. 162468 minus the six thousand pounds goods on sale or return. So one five six four six eight is going in there. And we can start with our cost of sales opening inventory. We can just take that straight from the trial balance, sixteen thousand two hundred and seventy-six. Then we've got purchases. Now, the purchases were adjusted by, what did we have for purchases? We had the 82,567, and we're taking 12,000 off there. So we end up with 70,567 for purchases. And then our closing inventory, we had that there, 24,002 was the adjusted figure for that one. So closing inventory, 24,002. So let's label that cost of sales. What they add up to so 16276 plus 70567 plus 24002 is oh, minus 24002 even is 62,841. So our gross profit now can be the difference between the 156468 minus the 
841, which is 93,627. Then we have to look for any other income. So anything that says received, um, not to be confused with receivables, uh, we haven't actually got anything that says received, but if you remember the discounts, they gave us the discounts allowed and the discounts received. So we need to stick that in. Discounts received, £820. If we add those two together, we get 94447. That doesn't get a title. Then we can take off the expenses. <clears throat> so let's start at the top. Let's not forget we've got discounts allowed to our customers there, £460. Um, what else have we got here? Purchases we've dealt with. General expenses, nothing changed with the general expenses. So 26500 going in there. Rent and rates, we had 14000 minus the 1500 prepaid. So that's 12500 and then we've got our depreciation, which was twenty thousand pounds. Let me—I've forgotten anything there. So if we add those four figures up together, we get fifty-nine four sixty. And then if we take one away from the other, we get our profit for the year, which is thirty-four thousand nine hundred and eighty-seven. So there's part one of that question finished okay so the second part of this question is a little six mark written question um, and it says that Rachel believes that the adjustments for additional information number two and three so number two was the sale or return and number three was valuing the goods at the lower of cost and net realizable value um, she believes that they will have a positive impact on her financial statements okay so do we agree with that situation well um, if we look at the goods on a sale or return basis, we took £6,000 off of sales revenue, which would have reduced the profit, but then we added 4800 onto um, closing inventory, so that would have reduced cost of sales and thereby increased the profit. So overall, her profit has gone down as a result of dealing with the sale or return by £1,200. So whether we think that's a positive impact, I'm not entirely sure. She's reduced the profit by £1,200. Now, it's asking us to assess whether the adjustments will have a positive impact, but also to make reference to the relevant accounting concepts. So you've got a choice of two that you could include for this, this sale or return business. So one of them is the realisation concept, which is that we should only be realising the sale when legal title to the goods passes from the seller to the buyer. Now, clearly, if goods are just being given to a customer on a sale or return basis, that legal title remains with Rachel. They haven't transferred that to the customer. So realisation would state that we shouldn't be recording the sale. We should just leave the goods in our closing inventory um, until such times as they are actually sold. The other concept that we could use here is prudence. So prudence is where if there's any doubt about anything. Um, we shouldn't be um, anticipating any profits. Uh, we should always be erring on the side of caution. And, and if there is any doubt, reporting a lower, more conservative figure. So either of those would be absolutely fine. There. Closing inventory, um, we've got, if you remember, the, um, the goods had cost 925 and the net realisable value was £860. So there was an extra loss of £65 to deal with with that closing inventory. So again, um, that would have reduced her profit because closing inventory has gone down, therefore profit will go down because cost of sales has increased. Um, and again, prudence concept would apply there. So prudence states that, you know, again, when there's any doubt about anything, always report a lower profit figure. Um, you know, and, and, and certainly in this case, we are recognising the fact that we've lost that money. So we're not overvaluing the value of the assets, the, the closing inventory. We are um, using a, a lower, more conservative figure. So profit's been reduced. Now, remember, we need to make a judgment. So we need to assess whether they will have a positive impact on Rachel's financial statements. Now, you could go one of two ways with this one. You could say, yes, they'll have a positive um, impact because the statements will now show a true and fair view, whereas perhaps before they didn't. Um, or you could say that you don't think they will have a positive impact because her profit overall is going to be down by £1,265. Either way would be absolutely fine. But what you need to do is make sure that you fully assess you know, both things and refer to those accounting concepts. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.